You hear that? Okay. Water pump junk. All right, so what we have here is a 2004 Chevy Trailblazer with the 4.2 liter. Um, we're changing the fan clutch, the electric fan clutch, and the water pump. Uh, the water pump was making noise, and I decided to change the fan clutch at the same time. Um, I've already done the job. I'm just putting this video, this section of the video, at the beginning of the video, so let you know what you'll need for uh, tools and stuff. Um, so. What you'll need for tools and equipment, this is what I use to complete the job. Uh, Dex cool, compatible, antifreeze, you can get pre-mixed or you can get full strength like I did. Um, if you're going to get pre-mixed, you might want to grab two gallons because you're going to lose quite a bit of coolant. Um, you're going to need a uh, flat blade uh, screwdriver, some channel locks or some pliers. Uh, the pipe wrench was just a small pipe wrench. Uh, otherwise, you can use an inch and a half open end wrench. If you can get your hands on one of those, it'll make things easier. Uh, two pound hammer, six inch extension, three X extension, um, 13 millimeter socket, 10 millimeter socket, uh, quarter inch drive, quarter inch to three eighths adapter, a uh, three eighths drive ratchet, a three eighths drive, inch pound torque wrench, a clutch, uh, fan clutch hold tool to uh, hold the pulley while you loosen the fan uh, clutch nut. You need a uh, 3 8 drive and a pipe to remove the serpentine belt or you get the serpentine belt tool from your auto parts store when you get your uh, fan clutch hold tool. Some sandpaper. The rigid job max was optional. I uh, used it to make a couple uh, relief cuts in the shroud. I'll show you in a second. It made the job go much, much faster. Um, water pump and the fan clutch. Those cuts that I was talking about were right underneath here, the neck of the radiator in the shroud. Like I said, they're so minor you can't really even see. You can see a little bit from this side here. It's just a U-shaped cutout in the shroud, allowing the shroud to pull up out. Um, rather than have to spend the time to mess around disconnecting the fan clutch from the fan and, and, and fighting with all this stuff here. It adds way, way more time. This is much, much faster. Um, probably saves over an hour's worth of time for those two little cuts. Um, but yeah, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we did was we got a shallow pan. We lined it with a trash bag and poured some cheap cat litter in there just to, uh, just to watch so it doesn't spill and splash out on the yard because um, we're going to have to remove this upper radiator hose right here. Um, so we'll go ahead and get this detached. You can look down through and make sure that your pan is lined up the best you can. I'm using a pair of channel locks. If you don't have channel locks, you can use locking pliers, you can use regular pliers, whatever you got just to be able to relieve this clip uh, from do is get the hose pulled off here should come off I want to make sure your engines cold before you do this and hopefully it all goes down into your drain pan I'm gonna go ahead and remove this whole operator hose you could probably work around it if you can't get the whole thing off but it should just be a matter of taking this one extra clip back here off go and if your hose um, gets a little sticky you can take a pick and carefully pick underneath and around and just work it around until the hose actually comes off sometimes they stick so there and that gets us right out of the way we'll just set this off to the side all right so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to disconnect the clip you squeeze here and this is for the fan clutch itself the electronic connection for the fan clutch We'll just set that out of the way. Um, and then we have these two 10 millimeter upper uh, shroud bolts here, but we're gonna loosen some of the uh, some of the stuff down here, the pulley bolts and the uh, electric fan clutch uh, big nut here. We're gonna get that loose. We're get everything loosened up finger tight before we start messing with the shroud. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen up the big 
fan clutch nut here. If you have an open end wrench large enough, then good for you. I don't, I only have an inch and a quarter and I believe it is inch and a half. So I will be utilizing a small pipe wrench to get on that, to turn it. Um, so you can get the hold tool from your local auto parts store and you want to adjust it um, using this lever here and it just clicks and you can unclick it to adjust for whatever size you need as far as spanning the bolts. You want to get it on two of these bolts here and you want to make sure that it's tight enough. So go one click at a time when it's close, get it so it locks on there. All right. And what I did is I just let it rest. I let the handle rest on the air box over here to hold it. Um, got in here with my pipe wrench, put it on the nut, get over here with my two pound hammer and uh, being careful not to whack your fan blades and just give it a good knock and it should, should come free for you. All right. So now you can see that that spins freely. We can spin that nut right off pretty much by hand. I'm gonna get the whole tool out of the way because it's just gonna make things worse. So we'll just put that away. And then we should be able to simply spin this nut by hand. Yeah, there we go. Now it's spinning. And we'll go ahead and get this off and we'll come back. We have the fan and fan clutch loose. And you can see the fan sets inside this shroud. So we're gonna take the shroud out as one piece. Uh, in order to do that, we need to loosen up these 10 millimeter bolts here. So we'll get these loosened and we'll come right back to you. In order to remove this fan shroud, okay, GM should have had two cuts here, right here and right here to make a U-shaped cutout to pass this radiator neck here. So we're going to make two cuts here and just be able to pull the shroud out. If you're not comfortable making these two cuts into your shroud, all right, then this is probably not the video for you. However, this is the fastest way to, to, to get this done. It's the most easiest way I've seen how to do it and it doesn't affect anything on the vehicle other than have a U-shaped opening on the top of your shroud, which nobody would ever see anyways. So we got the multi-tool. Um, you could probably use a roto zip. Um, you could probably use a uh, sawzall, a little hand saw if you had to or whatever. But what you basically want to do is make one slit on each side of the filler neck here. And then one, one cut across. comes out there and now we should be able to remove the whole entire shroud assembly with the fan clutch and everything else as one entire unit just watch those training cooler lines down below and everything comes out together so that 30 second cut right there that notch saves so much time and so much effort. And it's really not that big of a deal. Most of these trailblazers are really, really old right now. They're approaching 20 years old. This one has like 160,000 miles on it. Again, if you don't feel comfortable cutting the shroud, there's other videos out there that'll show you how to do it the long way. All right, now that we got the fan shroud and we got the fan and the fan clutch out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and get these four 13 millimeter water pump pulley bolts. Um, we left the belt on to hold some tension on the pulley. Um, if they, these ones I've already pre-loosened, but I did so just giving it a little gentle tap with a, uh, a hammer on the socket and it should break them free for you. You don't want to take them all the way out. You just want to loosen them up a little bit here. And then we're going to go ahead and take the belt off. To get the belt off, you can rent a tool similar to your hold tool at the same time if you feel like it. Um, all it does is just relieve tension on the belt. You can make your own belt tension reliever by just taking a 3 8 drive and a pipe. The 3 8 drive fits right into this square slot in the tensioner right here. And you just put pressure with your pipe 
towards the battery and it allows the belt to be removed. Just take note, if you don't have a little diagram on your shroud, just take note of the pattern of your serpentine belt before you loosen it all up. Um, but yeah, that allows us to get the belt right off and right out of the way so we can proceed with the project. All right, so once you have your belt off, now would be a good time to inspect your belt for any kind of wear um, inside and outside. Um, there's no, no cracks. The grooves all look consistent. So just check your belt out, and if it looks like it needs to be replaced, now would be a good time to replace it. Now we got the belt out of the way, we're going to get these uh, 13 millimeter bolts that we left finger tight out of the pulley here without dropping them. Um, so we can get to the water pump itself. And just set these off to the side. So you can see that this the water pump shouldn't have any play at all. Um, so this one definitely needs to be replaced. And that's the noise that we were hearing when the engine was running. Um, so you got one, two, three, four, five, ten millimeter bolts. Um, you want to just go ahead and remove these five. 10 millimeter bolts and then we can remove the water pump from the engine block so we'll get these removed and we'll come right back to you with the bolts removed we're removing the last one now with the bolts removed we should be able to separate the water pump from the engine block if it's a little bit stuck you might have to give it a little gentle persuasion with the hammer to get it loose and it's going to puke all over the place so hopefully you have your drain pan still underneath your vehicle. And yeah, we'll just let that puke for a minute. But yeah, you can see that this one is uh, definitely, definitely no good. Um, it has some play. Um, the new one should come with a new gasket, but we have to clean up and remove any remnants of the old gasket from the mating surface here. So we'll go ahead and get this dried up with some shop towels and uh, We'll clean this uh, mating surface up here. So once you get the fluid so it stops running, I stuffed the rag inside of the hole here to keep particles from going in. And we just want to clean up this matting surface, you know, a little bit of sandpaper here, make sure we get any of the old gasket off. Um, you don't really have to have a, a, a real aggressive sandpaper, just enough to, to clean up the mating surface so we have a good seal with the new gasket. Um, this particular gasket doesn't require any RTV uh, silicone sealant or anything like that, just the gasket itself. So you want to make sure you have a good, good mating surface. While you got your sandpaper out, be a good time to check inside the pulley itself. Um, sand this down so it's smooth and even all around stops any kind of balance issues that that might arise down the road so just try to make sure that there's no clumps of debris here or anything like that so now with the mating surface all cleaned up we went ahead and installed the new gasket that came with the pump on the pump we're going to carefully line up the holes and insert the new water pump into the engine block. And we'll go ahead and get one bolt started here just to uh, hold the pump in the block until we get the rest of the bolts in place. And then they have to be tightened in a cross pattern and then torqued in a two-step process. The water pump bolts, these 10 millimeter bolts, need to be torqued cross pattern first to 35 inch pounds and once you have them all at 35 inch pounds you want to adjust your torque wrench to 89 foot pounds and do it all over again So that's all at 35, we'll change it to 89 and we'll do it again. Now that the water pump is installed, the bolts are all torqued properly, we gotta reinstall the water pump pulley with the four 13 millimeter bolts and get those 
torque down. So we'll go ahead and get this put back on. We're not going to torque it down yet until we reinstall the belt. So we're just going to get these guys finger tight for now. So we'll get all four of these in there. And we'll check back. Now that we have the water pump pulley bolts um, tightened down finger tight, we're going to go ahead and get the serpentine belt reinstalled following the pattern on your shroud. If you didn't have a pattern on your shroud, hopefully you drew a pattern. So we'll get that installed and come back. Once again, after you have your belt routed properly to release tension to be able to get the belt around the last pulley, you want to make sure that you use your uh, tensioner tool here to release tension on the belt to get it around the final pulley. With the serpentine belt reinstalled, we can now torque the water pump pulley bolts down uh, 18 foot pounds, which correlates to 216 inch pounds. So I don't have to switch torque wrenches. And you should be able to get that with just the tension of the belt. You might have to hold the pulley a little bit, but that should go ahead and torque these down. All right, we got to change the fan clutch now on the fan itself. So we'll get these four 13 millimeter bolts out, which will allow us to separate the fan from the electric fan clutch. Just let it down gently. Remove the fan, tip the shroud up, clip on the back side, you just squeeze these two tabs should allow this to pop out of its holder here. All right, we'll get the new one. We'll pop the new one in to the holder. It should just snap in. We'll line it up. Set the fan back on. Hold the clutch the shaft, line up the bolts, and tighten these guys back down, and we should be able to install this back into the car. I didn't find a torque spec online for these bolts here, so just get them good and tight. They weren't brutally tight when I took them off. So just hold the fan, just get them good and snug. I would do it again in a cross pattern though. All right, those are good and tight. This whole unit's ready to drop back in the car. So we'll get it over there and uh, come back. Now we're ready to reinstall the fan shroud and fan clutch assembly all as one unit it should drop down in here nicely just watch the fan itself watch the tranny cooler lines down at the bottom but once again because we were smart and we cut that notch out it makes it a lot easier job to just wiggle this all down in here um, once we get it down in here i'm going to take a pause for a second and remove the cap the safety cap that was covering up the threads on the new water pump. Um, so that, that way we can thread the new fan clutch assembly onto the water pump um, once we get everything set down in here nicely. Once you have your fan shroud set back down nicely, once again, this nice cutout, and once the hose is on, nobody's ever gonna see that, it's fine, especially if this is your own vehicle. If you're doing it for somebody else, like I said, there's a longer process. There's other videos that cover that, but this video is for guys that are just doing this in their driveway that need to get the job done. And if it's winter time like it is here, you don't want to be outside any longer than you have to. So now that we have that in, we're going to go ahead and put the 10 millimeter bolts back in the shroud. Um, you can go ahead and pop your trainee cooler lines back into the shroud. Um, we can go ahead and reconnect the fan electrical connection over on this side so we'll get all that done and we'll go ahead and thread the fan back onto the shaft the electrical connection made two 10 millimeter bolts back in place 
we're now going to thread the uh, fan clutch shaft bolt back on to the water pump shaft. And once that stops turning, then we're going to have to get on here and tighten this up. All right, to tighten up the um, clutch bolt, you use the same tool to hold that you use to take it off. And in my case, I'm using the same pipe wrench to tighten it up. Um, if you have an inch and a half open end wrench, that's what you would use, but I don't. So I'm just gonna tighten it up with this. Get it just good and tight. And there you go. That one's all set. With the water pump and the fan clutch, fan assembly reinstalled and snugged up here, nice and tight, we'll go ahead and get the radiator hose put back on and we'll get the clamps put back on. Once you get the uh, radiator hose back in place here, just go ahead and get your clips put back in place. And these clips, they just unsnap. Um, if you have this style, you just set them on there, get them lined up and uh, you just take a flathead screwdriver, stick it in this little tab here and pry down and they should pop right back on. So next step is going to be to fill the coolant system back up with a 50-50 mix of water and coolant. You can buy 50-50 pre-mixed. I bought full strength. Um, so I'm just gonna cut it with some water. We'll get this filled up and then we're gonna start the car and uh, just let the system bubble out all the air bubbles, make sure we turn the heater on high. So we'll get this filled up and we'll come back. All right, so with the radiator topped off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the car up. We're gonna leave the heater on high and we're gonna check and see um, air bubbles coming out of the system here and just let the system bleed the air out um, and then top it off again if needed and then put the cap on and then make sure your reservoir is full as well. As you can see with the engine running, you can see a lot of the air bubbles coming out of the system. As the vehicle warms up and the thermostat opens, the level will go down some more, possibly some more air bubbles. You basically just want to let it run for a little while until you get all the air out of the system.